Welcome. Let's go ahead and talk about Stackdriver and what you need to know for the GCP Cloud Architect exam. So one of the areas on the test that uh, I was sort of caught off guard on was Google Stackdriver. And even though I sort of knew what it was, I, I didn't know all the components and, and where they fit in. And that was sort of where exactly they tested you on and not only on the cloud architect exam but also the data engineer exam and i'm going to cover what you need to know for the cloud architect exam um, as far as the data engineer exam we're going to cover that separately because it covers sort of a deeper area but more narrow whereas the cloud architect it sort of covers the thousand foot to 500 foot level whereas the data engineer you really need to know down to the hundred foot level to, to be able to do well on that exam. So let's talk about Stackdriver. The, the, the first thing is that you want to know is that it is a hybrid monitoring, logging, and diagnostics feature set for applications on Google Cloud Platform and AWS. Now Google purchased Stackdriver and they rebranded it to Google Stackdriver. That's essentially um, the, the name difference. So the proper name is Google Stackdriver. So, so uh, I'm not following a good example already, am I? Uh, so Stackdriver, uh, for short, I'm going to basically, you know, say Stackdriver is Google Stackdriver. So don't want to hear those emails complaining. <laughs> so uh, basically Stackdriver monitors the cloud service layers in a single SaaS solution. So basically you have a single pane of glass utilizing your typical console approach where you can log in and monitor your GCP resources and AWS resources. And there is capability to extend that out to perhaps OpenStack as well. So again, if you have some good developers or programmers that are good with the SDKs, this can also be extended out. Native integration with Google Cloud Tools, BigQuery, Cloud PubSub, Cloud Storage, etc. So again, EC2, you name it. App Engine, so a lot of other components. You access it from the cloud platform. Benefits you may want to know. The first thing is, is that it monitors the multi-cloud environment. I'm going to go ahead and do a demo. So we'll go through a demo and I'll walk you through some of the interface, some of the features. I already set up an App Engine instance for us to, to go ahead and review and, and set up alerts and, and see how that works. We'll go ahead and identify trends, prevent issues. The goal is to lower monitoring headaches, fix problems faster, reduce monitoring noise. So, for example, one of the really nice features with this compared to, uh, for those that, you know, for example, have worked in a NOC before and have used products like, uh, you know, Splunk or, or HP OpenView products. I forgot the new name on top of my head. But typically what can happen, especially um, uh, with a lot of monitoring products, is they, you know, they'll send alerts and this happened at this time, this happened at that time. Whereas with Stackdriver, it sort of automatically filters out. So if you get like a bunch of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, you know, 404 errors, okay? And those 404 errors, you can basically, you know, see like 100 if you look at the log, right? With Stackdriver, it doesn't approach it that way. It just lists that error once. And then if you want to drill down into, you know, how many instances you have and what time, you can do that as well. Major features, monitoring, debugging logging, tracing, error reporting. And I'm going to go through each of these in detail here uh, in a minute. But let's talk about how Stackdriver is really set up. So the first thing you want to know about Stackdriver is that Stackdriver is actually a separate uh, account that you're going to need to set up. So basically, if you're in Google Cloud, you click on the Stackdriver. And I'm going to walk everybody through this, of course, in the demo. And so basically you would click on Stackdriver. It'll bring you over to the Stackdriver uh, website. 
and you would log in and you could log in basically actually you do want to log in with your GCP account that you want to use and so you log in with that uh, account it'll tie it to the projects it'll automatically for example if you have app engine instances running it'll automatically pick up everything that you need about that app engine project if you want to extend out to other instances uh, for example in GCP or AWS it's very simple to do that and basically one of the best practices uh, for example is you want to create a separate stack driver account for example that would monitor, for example, different accounts. So for example, when it says multiple, uh, uh, you know, you want to create a separate account, you're basically going to monitor separate projects in uh, GCP, for example. So for example, if you have a development project going on or a uh, production uh, related project or, or whatever, whatever you want to, you know, focus on, you go ahead and set up your accounts appropriately to accommodate that. And this is a nice little chart uh, that shows uh, how Stackdriver is sort of uh, defined. You have monitoring, logging, error reporting, trace, and debugger. As far as Stackdriver, when we talk about monitoring, defaults are intelligent and dynamic. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, basically, when you log in to your GCP account basically when when you log in a stack driver using your GCP account for example it'll automatically pick up uh, what you're doing so it'll automatically populate so you know again you don't need to do too much work here you could create your health checks whatever you want to do so let's say you want to and I'll walk you through a health check as well uh, you could set up health checks to uh, basically monitor and uh, validate performance whatever you want to do the metrics that you could use would be would be more around platform systems and, and applications. And so basically the flow of this would be to ingest data metrics, events, and metadata. And then you would go, of course, through the dashboard to view everything that you so choose. Now, as far as uh, the monitoring agent, you could go ahead and use a curl to do that. Here would be the command to, to do that. Uptime checks. And again, we'll check on this. I just uh, copied this. I had actually what I had done before I, doing this is I set up uh, some checks on App Engine and it started right around 1040 or so. And you can see that it started kicking off. And what I did is this check here monitors the six uh, GCP global locations. So that I know if there's an outage or something, it would let me know just as a simple test. And I also set up a Hello World application as well. And we'll go through some of that. Now, the monitoring agent is for AWS EC2 and GCP VMs. Now, what's cool is that App Engine already has this built in. You pretty much do nothing. You don't have to install the agent or anything. So you're good to go. So with App Engine, you don't need to you don't need to worry about uh, this command here to install the agent. So you would do this, for example, on uh, on GCP to install uh, that agent on that virtual machine. Now here again with App Engine, you don't need to do anything. It's pretty much populated with uh, the monitoring agent. Um, now for the test, you may want to know this. Uh, actually, for the data engineer, you want to know that. I'm going to highlight this as well. I'm going to put that in red because, again, I want everyone to be successful. You want to know what that is. Now with contain, uh, what is it? A container engine. There is no support as of right now, but I assume down the road uh, that that will change. But but who knows? I've seen nothing on the roadmap as of yet. Now you need to check your instances. You want to go to the monitoring and check uh, what is supported, of course. So let's talk about logging. So with logging, it supports platform system and app logs. There is a 30 day retention. Now with one of the things that 
you again, I don't cover, you don't need to totally know this for the test or whatever, is that there's two uh, approaches to Stackdriver. You have the basic and then you have the premium, essentially, where you get additional capabilities. So you'd have to pay uh, additional um, additional cost to, to use the, the additional features. So, um, so it's 30 days with the premium and then it's only seven days uh, for uh, the basics. So I'm going to put that in there since uh, I meant to do that. Okay. Now you can go ahead and search in filter. A lot of this is better to talk about and walk you through with the demo, to be honest. Log based metrics, and then you could set up alerts on logs as well. Now, if you want to go ahead and install the logging agent, you can go ahead and do that. And it's a separate agent. Remember, alert agents, monitoring agent is different. Logging agent is different. So again, you don't have to do this on App Engine. This is, again, for your VMs. With Stackdriver, uh, you don't want to use substrings. So from a best practice standpoint, don't use substrings. So you know, be careful with your syntaxes. Set up a filter, very easy to do. You could do that um, console or the you know, CLI viewing interface, you could export logs. So again, once you're, uh, once you go past that 30 days or seven days, you would need to export your logs to somewhere. Could, probably cloud storage would be the best fit, uh, unless if you wanna, you know, again, export them out somewhere else, that's your call. Big query. So on the data engineer exam, this is a, probably you know more focused around the data engineer exam but i want to cover it for the architect because again um, it wouldn't be especially if they update questions or something that they don't let anybody know they did which wouldn't surprise me is uh around like what you would do with stack driver to be able to search and analyze log files for example or to visualize those log files. You could tie it into Data Lab, PubSub, uh, you know, endpoints, for example. So this is definitely this is definitely covered on the data engineer exam. Not I've not seen this on architect, but again, um, you know, it, it takes a minute to just get that in your head. I would do it because I wouldn't be surprised if they do update the test pool uh, down the road here. Reporting. Now, when it comes to reporting, um, again, some of the, uh, did I, I skipped over that? Okay. When it comes to aggregating and display errors, uh, you want to pay attention to, um, you know, how you're handling error notifications, the, the dashboards. Uh, again, you have a lot of customization here. You wanna just focus on some of that. Languages here are supported. And trace. So, um, one of the one of the areas on the architect exam that they did ask about was understanding what part of stack driver you would need to um, think about considering if you had an application from from an end to end approach, basically that needed to be analyzed. And so that really, for me personally, I think that's more data engineer focus, but you need to know the difference between, for example, trace and debugging. Because uh, again, one of the questions was definitely trying to confirm your knowledge on whether you need to use trace, debugging, logging features in Stackdriver. So just be aware of that. Bottleneck discovery, uh, you know, again with trace, you can analyze apps and generate reports. You can capture projects with App Engine, and uh, there is a trace SDK available for these languages as well. Now, with tracing, again, tracing you're going to want to use for application discovery, application um, issues, especially like around latency, is, is going to be probably one of the main use cases. 
So for example, it's very common for web apps to uh, have issues around performance and latency is a big deal. And so this tool is really what you want to use for, for working on that. Data is collected for App Engine, of course. And you could also use this as well um, with the load balancers in Stackdriver Trace SDKs. And now let's touch on debugging briefly. Now, debugging is going to be focused around inspecting applications where you don't have to, to stop it. So, for example, you have an issue with an application. It may be sporadic. You, you, you know, does it make sense to shut down that app or take it offline and, you know, you know move it from production to, to dev and test or something? No. Uh, with this, you can run everything, and when I do the demo, I'm going to show you how this works. It's pretty slick. I, I have to say um, it, it does have some great benefits because it gives you the visualization as well as the details you need to really analyze that web uh, performance, for example. So pretty neat stuff. So again, it could be used with App Engine Standard or Flexible. This is what's supported for languages. And remember, there's an SDK for that, for, for some of these. It also, too, you could also put this in conjunction with snapshots of your applications as well. So let's say you don't want to try this on your production app. Let's go ahead and work on a snapshot. And you could also log point as well. So let's go ahead and get into the demo into the next module.